So up guys, Jesse with Pew Review. So I've got my BCA here. Uh, it ran pretty good yesterday. I had a few issues with my trigger and I wanted to swap it out. I've had one lying around for a while. That's not a Pro Mag trigger. It's just a Pro Mag bag that I happened to put a trigger in. I upgraded to a different trigger in one of my other ARs. So I've had this completely factory trigger just lying around. And this trigger, I've messed with a bunch. I've tried to polish over the years. Um, I kind of did like a Mad Maxi build. I lost a pin and I just used a nut and bolt, which allows, it's a six millimeter bolt, but it allows too much play in the trigger. And I was having issues with it resetting the other day at the range. So I wanted to put a proper trigger in this and eliminate all variables. This is my BCA bufferless nine millimeter upper that I've decided I actually like besides that dang charging handle coming loose. Um, but it's proprietary upper. You can see how it comes apart there. Yeah, it's not a typical AR, but it is an AR lower. Uh, this particular lower is from Helmetto State Armory and it takes Glock mags. And I've had nothing but good things to say about it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. I don't have a last round bolt hold open. Um, and as you can see, no buffer system. It's all proprietary, um, but that's fine. Anyways, let's get this trigger out. I'll show you how to make some quick work of this. I'm gonna be using like a little 764 bit that I have lying around. Use a punch, do it the right way. Uh, in this case, we're going to pull the trigger, release that, release some of that tension. See if I can get, there we go. Pop the pin out. And there's that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm guessing because of the excessive play with that bolt in there, the trigger had a little bit of side to side play. It just wasn't allowing it to cycle properly. I've done my fair share of polishing on this trigger and you can see I've removed a good bit of material. So it's just not as reliable. Um, you know, sometimes you gotta be willing to break some eggs to make an omelet. So if my brother walks in screen, I guess he's gonna be on the channel. Here we are, nothing special here, just a factory trigger, mil spec if you will. I'd like to get a binary trigger again and try them out. I've had one before and ended up getting rid of it. I thought it was unnecessary, but you know, now I just want to have more fun. I got plenty of nine mil saved up, so I might do that. If you guys want to see me get a binary and just dump rounds out of some of my AR9s, let me know be happy to do it just come support the channel like share subscribe let me get this on camera instead of being all up in my face sorry uh, yeah like share subscribe you know this sometimes is a little tricky so what I like to do I know everyone's got like pins that they use to set the pins and things like that I don't need five pins to just set a pin Make sure your spring is down in there, which it is. I started into the trigger, as you can see there. Now you can pop this into place. There we go. Just kind of push it around until you get it in place. There you go. Don't mind all that. Mind your business. That's all. Just mind your business. Okay. Let's see what we're working with here. Now, do as you will. It's completely up to you, but I just want to let you guys know, as far as lightening up your hammer spring, there is a very cheap way of doing it without grinding and doing all that nonsense. I'm going to use the old hammer because I just realized that the grind, I don't know if you can see that there, this is an unused factory hammer. I don't like that grind. It's at an angle, which is definitely going to cause this thing to feel disgusting. And this hammer's got a lot of use. The issue I was having was with 
this. And I think that was my issue with resetting. And uh, yeah, so anywho, with that being said, we're gonna use the factory hammer. Uh, do this at your own risk, but if you take one of these springs and just excessively bend it a little bit, just like so. Don't worry, that'll clear. Once you get it in there, that spring will pop on that side. It weakens that spring a little bit, makes your trigger pull a little bit softer. You could actually cut about a pound or two. Yes, you are weakening the spring. These springs cost you all of like $3, and you can still get a lifetime worth of shooting out of this spring. So, again, do at your own risk, but that's something I've done on a couple different guns, and it drastically helps. So, judge me or don't. I don't really care. Just gonna be honest with you. So, this is tedious. Get that lined up. See if you could pop a pop it in there, wiggle it back and forth, whatever. And then come on. There we go. Don't be afraid to slap it around, you know? Anyways, so this top pin, here's my biggest gripe. I do have some anti-walk pins. I've got one actually right here. You could use them, that's fine. The pins are designed to rotate. Um, but this top pin right there has a little, I don't have another pin right here to show you, but it has like a little divot line in the middle. And it's, there's a, if you look in the hammer, there's a notch right there. There's a little spring in that notch see a little spring dead center right there that catches the pin and keeps it from coming out as far as this secondary pin there are notches on each side now this is an anti-walk pin so this doesn't have the notches but there's a little notch here and a notch here on your factory pins and the factory hammer spring these springs sit on the pin like so in case you don't know how it works and that retains the back pin so I have never once in my entire life had an issue with these pins walking out and if you do there's definitely an issue with either the trigger or your receiver anywho it's a good feeling trigger for a mil spec trigger and all with the simple trick of bending one of those springs. Again, do that on your own risk. You are technically weakening the spring. That's why I only do it to one side. Um, and I'd say this is probably about a five and a half to six pound trigger. Uh, one, because it's got thousands of rounds through this hammer, even with the new lower trigger group there. Um, but that spring's a little bit weaker now. Um, I've never had an issue with it not firing or anything like that so there you go that's how you swap out the trigger on your ar and also you got a little in-depth review not really a review you got an in-depth look at the bca bufferless nine millimeter upper coming off and its proprietary recoil spring again this is a standard lower all you do is add this adapter block in the back there's a plug that you screw down and then you screw this to it all your your little spring and detent is still in there for your pin and then this goes like so and it goes in there some funky way like so and that's it it sits well maybe if i kept the pins open jesse yep you're right don't mind me just talking to myself there you go it's really not a big deal at all so safety works doing his thing all right it's actually resetting now which it wasn't doing with that other trigger because it was just slam worn out and i polished it a little too much anyways that's it that's all i got to show you for today thanks for watching